Hey guys, what's up? Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency video. Welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe if you like what you see, and let's get right into the information today. So here on XRP's website, as always, and I want to cover a few things. You better stick around to the end of the video. I will be going over some very important points that I feel a lot of the XRP community, at least the newbies in the last you know year or two, don't necessarily understand yet. And I think this would just give you a lot more of confidence in terms of your investment. Remember, I'm going to say this once, not financial advice. And all right. So I saw the digital asset investor kind of you know, talking about some points. And he said something like, you know, there's one thing that still confuses me about XRP. I cannot believe this opportunity window has been open for this long. And then I saw someone else kind of respond to that. And they said, yeah. And you know what? A lot of people said the same thing during the dot com bubble because there was a huge lag before adoption just took place. But when things got moving, it happened quickly. And I don't know about you guys, but I am like 99% sure what I'm doing with this investment. To me, this is the greatest opportunity of a lifetime. I'm not trying to convince you. I'm simply sharing my thoughts. And frankly, it doesn't matter because our retail money, whether even if it's millions of dollars invested, is a drop in the bucket. This is nothing. And I think that we're honestly just kind of taking advantage of an economic reset, adding initial liquidity, which we need and kind of being very many market makers for those of you that trade. And I think that's what the future is going to happen when they finally decide to ramp things up. It will be unlike anything we've ever seen. So if you're here, you better do your own research, guys, because I think that you have. I know people will call us lucky in the future, but, you know, there is kind of a sense of luck with this. We are here at the right place in the right time, and I wouldn't want to have it any other way. Now, there was another tweet digital asset investor kind of talking about a few things that we had and he said you know utility check working with regulators from day one check the fastest check cheapest in terms of lowest fees check most scalable check greatest digital asset ever created check zero doubt check and i would tend to agree now what i want to talk about really quick just to hammer over a few of those points with like xrp first off utility well, guys, I think we already know what's happening. Look, faster, less costly, more scalable. And the whole idea of RippleNet is so customers can use XRP for sourcing liquidity in cross-border transactions. A lot of people don't really comprehend what this means when they're saying sourcing on-demand liquidity, ODL. What's happening is the current SWIFT infrastructure, 11,000 plus participants in the legacy network that was created 40, 40 years ago, pre-internet, pre-digital era, has a corresponding banking network they have to use. They are not capable, they do not have the funds. They have to use something that is very costly. It might, you know, be beneficial for the tier one banks to get, you know, take the cream off the top, but the other banks, even emerging markets, the unbanked, they're all suffering. And of course we know the benefits today. And with XRP, we're actually freeing trillions of dollars. Now, even as it says right here, ensuring instant settlement, lower exchange fees, and more efficient use of the working capital. Absolutely. As I say in every video, the trillions of dollars that are sitting idle, that are dormant capital, doing nothing, are losing money each and every year to inflation, capital costs, and even just other costs by not being able to reinvest. Could you imagine even getting a 3% return on $1 trillion? Exactly. And then that money can be reinvested. All right. So again, Micropayments, e-commerce, this is already leveraged use cases existing today. Peer-to-peer -to -peer services, even you know loans, micro-loans, everything, guys. There's so much being built on the XRP ledger, and that's why it was so great to see the recent event with uh, UBRI, which is awesome. Now, again, regulators, obviously XRP, or at least the company Ripple, it's well-known if you guys do your research since like 2012. You know, they've been actively working and engaging with the SEC on like a weekly basis. The Bank of International Settlements, even the World Bank, those kind of groups are like brother sister organizations like the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, of course. And they've even met with the Trump administration. Need I say more? I like I just don't understand how you guys think this is a scam. That's a complete joke to me. That is the exact type of propaganda that they want you to think. Again, fastest, of course, four seconds it says here. Typically, they say three to five seconds. If you actually look on the ledger, it looks like it's settling in about like 3.6 seconds, typically, as an average right now. Now, if they implement Cobalt, which is an update, we'll see easily one second transactions. We have the speed to scale for the global population of 7.5 billion people, along with what they've also talked about, the Internet of Things, IoT, not just Internet of Value, IOV. The IoT devices that are expected, you know, like the statistic now is IoT devices are expected to nearly triple and reach over 75 
billion connected devices by 2025 at this current rate. And we are capable to scale to that. Lastly, scalability. I mean, with that, we're the most scalable. I've discussed different types of hardware to also improve the number of transactions per second as well. There's been various studies. Um, why am I blanking on the group? Was it IBM? I don't want to give out the false source, but basically we've seen it in some of my pre previous videos on this channel. Now, Bitcoin, literally starting at three to six transactions per second, TPS. Now, let's just say they're at six tra transactions per second. And they're trying to implement other layer two technologies, you know, lightning network. We already understand why that will not work long term. Now, XRP already starting at 1500 TPS already 1500 divided by six. That's 250 times larger already. XRP starting 250 times ahead of what Bitcoin is in Bitcoin. We know outdated technology. And even though XRP, you guys think that this is slow for, you know, at least these types of transactions. I think that we are going to see this number grow substantially. We know, we know it's distributed. If you want the argument, you already know XRP is more decentralized, blah, 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 blah. I'm here for a return on my investment. But anyways, let's get into the information. Just wanted to give you that you know little intro. So right here, Matthew Linney. We're going to be talking about Vanguard a little bit. The guys at SPQR, we got Jay, we got Lee, we got all those great researchers, even King Solomon now. Vanguard begins testing blockchain technology for foreign exchange trading. We already know the market of FX transfers well over $5 trillion per day. It's a complete monster. We already know how XRP can help by additional liquidity, exchange fees. If it, it's involved in any way, even 1% of the market share, expect your investment to skyrocket. Now, obviously, it has a domino effect. It's not... <laughs> If there's any adoption, it's not going to be 1%. I'll tell you that much. They're going to see the value. Utility drives demand. And you will see XRP market dominance increase dramatically. I'm just being very, very conservative. And I think that we're all going to smile back in a few years. Could it be sooner? Absolutely. Right here. Vanguard begins testing blockchain technology for FX trading. We already know Mutual Fund Vanguard is testing a new P2P, peer-to-peer, foreign exchange trading platform for asset managers through a partnership with Symbiont. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. They're a blockchain technology provider, according to a Bloomberg report. Now we're talking about that. And then right here, currently piloting a project focused on improving efficiency and reducing risk of FX hedging. And in addition, lower the cost of investing for all investors. Additional efficiency. Right here, Ganesh Hiramath. And I'm sorry if I said that last name wrong, but I appreciate this thread. This is awesome research right here. So again, 5 trillion Vanguard testing Ripple's interledger protocol. And this is speculation. We're connecting the dots. But if you see what's happening on the back end, you are not much of a tinfoil hat guy, and this is not far off to even speculate on. So right here, the Vanguard Group is testing a blockchain-powered platform, and again, I've already said this, and then will allow asset managers to trade currencies while avoiding the big investment banks. So right here, Vanguard plus Symbiont plus Counterparty plus Ripple's Interledger Protocol. So we got right here... So click the picture. Symbiont creates Ripple Gateway for Counterparty XCP. A Ripple Gateway for Counterparty, Counterparty's native currency, XCP, and other Counterparty assets may be sent. With the Ripple Gateway implementation, Counterparty users will now be able to transfer their funds in real time with minimal transaction fees. As we go down this thread, we see Vanguard, again, now using blockchain. We already know this. Now using blockchain technology to help manage $1.3 trillion in index funds. And I know I've said that in past videos. We go down here. Vanguard to challenge banks grip on 6 trillion currency market. See again, you know, I've been saying over 5 trillion, but with inflation and, you know, additional money nowadays, you can arguably say 6 trillion. Now the distributed ledger technology platform has been operational for two months and has handled some trades and the project is private. As we go to Symbiont is a building a platform for issuing and trading smart securities and fun facts. Remember Coinbase and Ripple getting into securitize. And what was that market worth? What was it? 7 trillion? And literally, you know, these groups are saying that there's going to be a huge demand for digitization, the tokenization of securities, asset fractionalization, just like those articles by R3 that I'm preaching nonstop talking about the value and why are we are. It's obvious, like there's no speculation with this. We're moving to a digital world. We already have information. Now value will do the same. Enabling peer to peer transactions, settlement and eliminating counterparty risk. What is capable of doing that? 
I'm telling you, it's not a bunch of CBDCs. They still need an intermediary. We are seeing more and more countries get regulatory clarity, and that is necessary. Does it happen overnight? Absolutely not. If you think that's the case, you're probably not patient enough to be an investor. And if that upsets you, you're a child. Right here, Symbiont bridges Bitcoin and Ripple with counterparty gateway. We have gateways, guys. And remember, the Ripple network, that is the gateway. What is the native currency that needs to be there and actually provide you know actual validation and everything on the ripple network xrp right here even nasdaq has also invested in symbiont you see the connections these are older articles but we're connecting the dots here and again lee at spqr and along with jay both great guys i know you've probably seen let me see here I know you guys have seen this picture as well. You got Lee and Jay and just showing the connections of Vanguard. Remember Accenture, which we talk about, CME Group, MUFG, PNC Bank, Temenos, and then all, you know, Target 2 payments, TIPS payments, you know, all of that with the European Union, even SIA with I Am Legion, always doing great research with uh, SIA Group and, you know, SIA Nets as well, their implementation and connections to the plus almost 600 banks at this point. The connections are crazy, guys. Like, if you really connect the dots, you can see what's happening here. All right, this is the last one we're going over. Matthew Linney, thanks for sharing. So Broadridge, an Earthport partner. Remember, Earthport has been a Ripple Net, Ripple Net partner for several years at this point. They are huge, 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 huge connections. Just like connecting the MoneyGram with over 100 corridors and payment platforms, we literally have a connection to Earthport that does the same thing. These are strategic measures. Why do you want to sign on banks or groups one at a time? That makes no sense from an acquisition standpoint. They know what they're doing. I can assure you of that. Now becoming a crypto powerhouse connections to Northern Trust. And I know Matthew Linney shared information on Northern Trust in the past and now Shadow, Shadow Financial. All right. So we see Broadridge. We've talked about them in the past. Acquisition marks Broadridge Financial's first foray into crypto services. We're going to be seeing more and more of this blockchain platforms. And this is what I just wanted to cover briefly. So as we can see here, as soon as it cooperates, with over 50 years of experience, Broadridge's infrastructure underpins proxy voting services for over 90% of public companies and mutual funds in North America. Here we go. And processes more than $5 trillion in fixed income and equity trades per day. Per day. Now, Broad Broadridge also employs approximately 10,000 full-time associates in 16 different countries. Now, what I want to emphasize, and this is what a lot of people don't comprehend, $5 trillion dollars per day transactions all we need remember there's not a lot of circulating supply in xrp you all think that all 39 or whatever 40 50 billion however you want to measure it is circulating false it's a much smaller number now all we need for price to appreciate is a single overlap of transactions if all the circulating supply of xrp is moving and then a transaction comes in it has demand for that so single overlap of transactions will prevent a net zero effect on the order books and it will instantaneously drive price up on the order books and run it up. And that will be the first domino that falls and then the rest just goes. Now this is assuming X rapid users flip the switch, so to speak, and they turn on and stay on keeping that volume up. Now what happens is the equation, higher volume, higher transactions per second, higher, you know, more payments moving through, the higher demand for XRP. The higher demand, obviously, because there's less supply as well, means the higher the price. And that will gradually keep going. Now, it could go in orders of magnitudes higher, like the flip of a switch, like people believe. Or it could just be very, very gradual appreciation. And with the crypto market manipulation, it wouldn't surprise me to see some corrections. But I think, and a lot of people, even Sam I am, has been sharing this theory, when we're approaching, you know, all-time high again of, you know, closer to $4, there might be another sell-off and might scare people out because they, a lot of people don't believe XRP can pass, you know, $10, $50, $100. So they're going to be taking advantage of that as well. All right. So remember, higher volume equals higher demand equals higher price. The rest is history. Now, remember, this whole time we've been preparing on ramps. There's we've been lighting various corridors. Don't even get me started on that whole idea from the DTCC with mass enablement. We're talking about building liquidity day in, day in, day out by incentivizing these LPs, these liquidity providers and market makers. Boom. That's it, guys. So like and subscribe if you haven't already. Please let me know your thoughts on this info in the future of XRP adoption, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.